I've logged into my graphic user interface of Solaris. Now, just so you're aware that I have logged in via a remote desktop procedure, RDP. I've connected to a Windows 2012 server. Inside Windows 2012, it had Hyper-V running, and inside Hyper-V, I installed an instance of a graphic user interface for Solaris Desktop, okay? So I've logged in here. Th running through my RDP, I have it set up so my keyboard shortcuts will work in any size of screen. The default is set for full screen. This is set. I've rechanged. I've changed that, and it's now able to have control keyboard shortcuts, no matter what size of screen. However, because I'm writing to an RDP, the mouse doesn't work. Right? Depending upon the application, who you're connecting to, how you're connecting to, and here, certain devices will not function. One of the main reasons is that the drive device drivers or the pointer drivers in Windows. I'm coming from a Windows machine, don't always transfer easily into another operating system and sometimes into a virtual machine. Virtual machine, the drivers can cause you more headaches than what they are worth sometimes. Okay, so in this situation, I have no mouse, which is a really good thing right now because a good skill is to be able to learn and manipulate around the desktop without a mouse. So for example, if I move my mouse onto the desktop and I click on it, I get the virtual virtual moose, virtual machine connection not captured. Okay, that tells me I am not going to have a mouse keyboard interaction. I'm only going to have keyboard only. So now let's take a couple of commands, a keyboard shortcuts and work around. Generically, a lot of the Windows shortcuts and Solaris shortcuts and Unix shortcuts and Linux shortcuts basically are all the same. There are some various varying differences, but as you work in the operating system, you will discover those and, and, and accommodate accordingly. First command, control escape. Press control escape. Control escape held down together. And it opens up the section here where it says applications. Right arrow gives me places. Right arrow gives me options to connect to something to do administrative tasks on the system here. Okay, now I'm going to go right arrow back to places, back to applications. When I'm in applications, I can now down arrow into the window that's open and I can go and move over to the right to open certain applications or certain files or continue on my way down to wherever I want to go to. Okay, anytime I want to exit any of these screens, I press escape, All right? So that was control escape, opens that up, escape, exit, okay? Now, I'm going to do another one here called um, control F10. I press the control key and I press the F10 function key here. And what it does, you'll notice it opens up a little window. And this little window is the equivalent to a right click of your mouse onto the desktop as you in Windows. So here it opens up a little window that gives me choices to manipulate inside because I've already got this open. That means it's active. I can press the down arrow key. And when I first download, it says create folder, create launcher, create a document, create open term or open the terminal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Work on the desktop appearance here, right? Change my screen resolution. I have all that options that I would normally be able to do. The only difference is instead of a point and click with a mouse, I now have to maneuver around with my keyboard. Okay, so let's go up to create document. Okay, what's really interesting is if you notice the arrow points to the right, yet the window opens up to the left. The reason the window opens up to the left is because there's no room on the right for the window to open up. All right, so now if I press the left arrow key on my keyboard, nothing happens. But while I still have create document highlighted, I press the right arrow key and it flips over to the sidebar box. And of course, it takes the first choice available. Well, the only thing choice that is available here is an empty file. I press enter right now. And what happens is creates right on my desktop here, the file wanting a new name. I'm gonna call this demo. And I press enter. 
Now, demo by default is already selected because I already created it. You notice that it's a different color here. Here is blue. What happens if I move the arrow key up? It moves up, okay? And I'm able to select any of the choices on that side. If I have demo selected right now here, okay, and I press enter at this point in time, what it does is it opens up the demo, pro, or the demo file, I should say here. It first opens up the graphic interface editing program, which is a G-Edit, and then it opens up the file. Like all other applications, you'll notice there is a menu bar and different different icons here. In the menu bar, there are letters underlined, again, that indicate options. All right, but let's leave those for a second. I, right now, there's my cursor. I am now going to put in some gobbledygook. And I could type in as much as I want to, to the heart's content here. Okay, but let's say I want to copy something. Uh, and, and I don't want to type a bunch of information in here. So I could do two things here. If I press Alt and hold the Alt key, and I'm going to go press the E, right? So it's Alt E, Alt E. It opens up a little drop down window that allows me to cut, copy, paste, etc., select all, whatever I want to do, change preference preferences. I'm going to down arrow my choices because some things are grayed out and I can't do anything. I'm now going to select it. So I've selected that whole line of gobbledygook. Okay. I can go Alt E again. And now I can copy, cut, paste, delete because these are now not grayed out but now available. And you'll notice cut is cut. Control X which is the same as in Windows. Copy is Control V same as in um, you know, in Windows, keyboard commands basically are the same. So I press Enter right now here, and I move down, my down arrow, and I'm going to just press Control V, and I paste it. Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V. Okay? So now I have the availability to do um, whatever, you know, additions, copy, paste, and so forth here. Now, I'm going to save this. Okay? So... I can go Control F, which allows me to save. I can down arrow to save, or I can just type in Control S without going. So I can do this. All right, press Enter, save. Okay, and of course you'll notice here, the bottom left-hand corner it shows saving the file, but it missed it. So watch this corner again. Now I'm just going to press Control S right now instead of going to the Alt F and then selecting it. I'm now just going to press Control S. And it says saving the file. Okay. And it's saving it back to the desktop here. If I want to go to close the program, I'm going to go to F here. I can again go to close. Close will close the file. It will keep the gedit program opening. However, quit, control Q will quit the program. And I've already gone out to there here. Okay, now there's a lot of different ways to move around here and do different applications and manipulations and so forth. You just have to practice them a little bit here. So I'm going to go to Control Escape right now. I'm going to do this in another way here. I am now going to go over to Places. Places, I'm going to go down arrow because I know it's my home folder for the user bill. I press Home Folder. It opens up the desktop. All right. Now, what's really interesting is there's a lot of things happening. There's a little, lot of different panes in different places. All right. So right now, if I press tab, you'll notice that there's a box that appears around here. In other words, I'm now working in this screen here. So in other words, right now, if I select this, I'm going to open the parent folder. If I right click, it jumps to the next available option. Right. You'll notice there's a little dotted line around it. I can home, etc. Keep continuing on, or you know, open a personal folder, or go to wherever I want to. If I press tab one more time, watch what happens. This time, I'm not in the bar across the top. I'm in places. You'll notice there's the tab. If I press down arrow, I now select bill. I select the desktop. I select the computer. I select the file system. Okay. So if I go back to Bill here, all right, and now I press Tab one more time, all right, now you ask yourself, what, where did it go to here, all right? Well, if I look closely here, 
you'll notice bill is shining it, it looks it seems a little darker something changed there and i press the down arrow key here all right i'm in desktop actually i press the down arrow key twice all right so now i'm inside the desktop watch i press enter and now i open up the desktop now if i press the back arrow key watch what happens see the word desktop is highlighted right and i press the arrow keys i'm down to add more software okay because i've selected desktop here if i press escape right i'm out of there nothing happens now like, like i'm not really out of there but nothing is 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 available so let's go through this again if i press tab okay you'll notice at the very top it says i'm because i'm in desktop here and i press tab the next option available the first available option is back i can right arrow and i can move around if i press tab again it takes me to places i can go up and down if i press tab again one more time and now i press the back arrow key right you see it goes close the side panel i can close that app option there right i can go back to places so i press tab it's moved me over to here press tab one more time i'm at bill press tab one more time here okay and again i staying in this screen here and then if i press tab one more time you will see that i am now where bill has got that box that's highlighted here and then if i right arrow key now i'm into the desktop so tab basically moves you around in different 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 panels per se okay so now i'm going i'm on the desktop and what's what i want to point out to you here is even though on the desktop you'll notice it shows me this oracle start here add more software so demos etc 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 now one thing that you'll notice is the oracle solaris live cd or what's indicated as a cd here on the desktop shows it as mounted and there's a link here but when you inside the file browser it is over here under Solar oracle solaris okay it is not shown as a desktop so let me just go down okay to demo i press enter on demo here there's my file here i'm going to down arrow key to there press enter and i'm just going to type in more gobbledygook just to show you that we can make some changes more gobbledygook okay and again watch the bottom left hand corner right over here right press Control s it saves the file here or i could have went to alt f which i'm going to do right now alt f i can go down to close oops sorry too far close or i can go alt f to quit okay now i press alt f here i revert back to the program or the application that i was in bef when i left this to go do the editing of the file and i'm going to go oops to and i move my arrow key to close and by the way i'll just show you a quick something when i'm going up arrow key i'm at the top if i press the up arrow key one more time it goes to the bottom and continues up down arrow key if i go all the way down to close and i keep going down arrow key takes me back to the top and just loops through all this stuff here and i press close very simple ways of getting around the, the solaris desktop very important um it is a skill worth learning because you never know when your mouse will die on you here and or will not work and if you don't have another mouse available or something's not working the drivers die or anything else here uh it is it is important to be able to finish your work get out of your work or perform administrative duties using the keyboard